ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರಂ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಾರಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ we continue with the <coughs> study of the mukshupadi come come to the <coughs> 25th sutra vachakat tirkaatil vachyatile unnu haikadi ishwarane upayope yeminne ninna ninaitirkai so in the previous <coughs> session we saw how all the purvacharyas have utilized the mantra to attain fulfillment having studied that aspect we further go to the go to a very important issue associated with the sutra which manavana mamuni comments as follows vajaka shakti sarvatayam sadith kodukkavatta kodukkavatta irukka idinudiya vaachyathile ivar hel oonrek hetu vedan arudichai hirar vajakathir kaattil ninnu thodangi is a very complicated and crucial point that is to be noted so there are two words that we should familiarize ourselves with in this context one is vachaka and another is vachya we have already come across these two words earlier once again it is being mentioned in a different uh, dimension here for example now i have this headphone in front of me so this is known as a headphone so the wired headphone which has which is spelled as h a d p h o n e or something like that is known as vachaka that which denotes an object or entity whereas vachya is this object which has which is circular in this place which has this type of a dimension etc so what is the difference between vachaka and vachya vachya is nothing but the entity that is denoted which is in the form of an object it need not be an object that has mass and it need not be three dimension for example if you take the word sky the word sky denotes a particular entity but it does not have any dimensions so the entity that is denoted by a word is known as vachya and the word that denotes an entity is known as vachaka and as i mentioned in one of the earlier sessions these two are invariably connected to each other 
there can be no entity that is not denoted by a word and there is no word that does not denote an entity. Suppose I have, I make a sound like this. In Sanskrit it is known as Dhvani or Shabda or <coughs> a sound which does not have any specific meaning. Of course in a particular context it might have some meaning. Suppose there is a big crowd and everybody is talking to one another and if you want to gain their attention or make them <coughs> be silent then you might actually clap your hand. Or if you want to call somebody who is going opposite the direction where you are standing, then you may clap loudly and call them to come back or something like that. So that means to gain their attention, you may use a sound like clap or something like that. But the sound emanating by clapping of the hand does not have any specific meaning. Whereas if I take a word like headphone, or a pen or a paper or something like that. It has the same meaning in all contexts almost. That is the literal meaning. Of course, implied meaning, there can be several implied meanings, that's a different thing. So here, <coughs> the Ashtakshara Mahamantra is the Vachaka. Especially the word Narayana is the Vachaka that denotes an entity and the Supreme Lord Narayana, who is the creator, etc. of this universe, is the Vachya. But ultimately, do we want the Vachaka or Vachya? Where do we actually go and whom do we attain ultimately? We don't attain the word Narayana, we attain the entity that is denoted by the word so earlier we it was mentioned draupadi ki apattile pudaveshuram dirutare namam ide vachya prabhavam polanda vachaka prabhava so in the case of draupadi just because she called govinda even though the lord did not appear there directly the word itself accomplished what needed to be accomplished so many a time suppose I, that is why I gave the example. Suppose Keshav Das Ji is a close friend of Donald Trump and I need to get some work done from him. So I will tell him, though Keshav Das might not have sent me, I will go to Trump and say, your great friend Keshav Das has sent me to meet you and get this work done. Immediately Trump will, he may accede to my request. Because it has come from, I have come from his close friend, M.D. Keshav Das. So that means the name Keshav Das itself carries so much of weight, irrespective of the individual. So that is what was mentioned in the context of Draupadikki Apatile Pudavishwarandaratarangamana. Even though it was Lord Krishna himself who facilitated the entire thing. She was interested or she all she did was she said Govinda Govinda. So Govinda Tiyada Krandate Krishna Mam Duravasa that is the shloka. So mere mentioning of the name itself can accomplish what needs to be accomplished. That was what mentioned there. Yes, that is true in one context. But in another context, not only the name but the entity that is denoted by the name also is very important. That is why all our Purvacharyas ultimately indulged in the Vachya rather than the Vachaka. They indulged in the Supreme Lord Himself rather than indulging in the name of the Lord. So this we should not actually feel that these two sutras are contradictory to each other. In fact, they are complementary to each other. When you see the greatness of the name itself, then you feel that itself is great. But when you see the ultimate reality that we all have to attain, then Vachya becomes important. So it's a very, very subtle concept which has been explained here. 
So he says, Vajakatir Kartil Vajatile Un Rahiki Adi Ishwarane Upayo Payam Indri in Ninetirikai. So which is commented upon like this. Idilungat, Adilungat, till Kil Chunapadi, Mantra Tinudi, Vajatile, Urvaja, Yer Hill, Un Rahiki. Upeyam Tarapara, it is Adanama, Kundusad, it tell Upayam Tarapara, it is Hakaria, Kuludel, Tay, you never had a call and Niki, Upayo, Pengel, Irendum, Isher and Ainde, Rapetipani, Rikay in the Badi. A very, very important concept that is unique to Sri Vaishnava philosophy. So in this, as I, mean, as I keep mentioning, even in Sri Vaishnava philosophy, there are several stages in which the Sri Vaishnava, uh, to which a Sri Vaishnava progresses. So it's like when you are in your fifth standard or sixth standard in primary school or middle school, you are taught in a particular manner. When you go to high school, you are treated in a different manner. The, Mode of instruction is different. When you read the pre, when you reach the pre-university level, there it is different. When you read the degree or post-graduation level, the, the mode of instruction methodology itself is different. And when you are in the PhD level or post-doctoral level, it is different. So these are being mentioned at different levels based on the stage in which a person exists or in which he is. So, what Manavana Mamani says here is, though one actually uses the mantra as a means to attain the Supreme Lord, further, after passing a particular stage, what happens? People may even leave the mantra. They will engage in the Supreme Lord alone. So it is like actually in Andal's Thirupa, I don't know if you are familiar with this or not. There is a big uh, discussion. So after they attained the presence of the Lord of Lord Krishna in Thirupa, what did what did they ask for? Because when Goda Devi are Andal and all her mates. Everything, of course, is purely happening in the mind of Anda. It happened in the mind of Anda. Not that she physically did all those things. Like in the case of Namarva, who actually had all the experiences within himself. But he explains the all the happenings in the world. If you say, no, study the Trivayamudi. My father, many a times, he keeps telling. He has very beautifully analyzed the minds of the people of all different types of people. How do non-devotees believe? How do devotees believe? How do people engage in business think? How do people engage in academic things think? Of course, they are not analyzed in, from these points of view. How do people who are the rulers think? How do people who are not the rulers, who are ordinary people, how do they think? For example, I will just give an example. For example, if there is a king, he wants to obsess, though he is already supreme, he wants to listen people talk about his supremacy. So he wants people to praise him. Even today in India, I don't know how it is in the US, all politicians, they want themselves to be praised by the people. So they go out of the way to do it. And many a times they surround themselves with psychophants who praise them in an uh, incorrect manner or who just exaggerate things. So Namarvar says, Shunnal virodhamide ahinam shunduvan kelmino. And in another context, he says, Yenna will in Kaviyan, Uruvar Kum, So, in one context, he says, 
people will not like what i am telling but i would like to tell it so he says i'll call i'll try to call a spade a spade i will not worry about what people think and in another context he says i will not give the services of my tongue to any person other than the supreme lord which means i will not praise any other person except the supreme lord that is lord nara and of course his avatar as his past times etc and things associated with him so <clears throat> people generally suppose there is a great poet the king of the times king of those times used to say i want to get praised by that poet he has seen several instances in several stories of several kings wanting to be praised by the best poet of the land of that time so like this there are several aspects several psychological issues so why i am telling this is but watch the adil adilum gaatil keel chonna padiye mantratinudeya vaachyathile poorvaacharyargal poonruhai kedi upayantara pararai thai sadhanama kondu sadhittal so do you consider the ashtakshara mahamantra as an upaya or not is a question when you go higher and higher and higher what happens is you will not feel that something little bit inferior can lead to something extremely speed so this is well established by what is known as the tatkratun nyaya in the shastras which i may have explained briefly very briefly i'll explain it only once again so tatkratun nyaya means what so in in the government when we talk about government jobs in india we always complain to the higher authorities that there is a pay disparity even in private companies it exists so one person may approach his boss and say sir he is doing a job that is inferior to me but he is getting paid more so either i should be getting the pay equal to him or i should be paid more this is what is known as the pay disparity or in government uh, jobs there is the big issue all the time most of the employees will be discussing about the pay disparity only rather than doing their work especially in india of course with due regards to people who or honestly and sincerely also. so tatkratun nyaya is what yathakratu asmin loke purusho bhavati tatha itah pret tatha itah pret bhavati the fruits that a person will enjoy here after after leaving this body he is commensurate with the sadhana prasthana he is commensurate with what the <clears throat> duties he performs when he is alive yathakratu asmin loke purusha so the fruits that he attains after leaving the body is commensurate with the efforts he has put in when he possesses this body so there is no disparity between the efforts and the results that is what is tatkratun nyaya so here also in the beginning though we say the mantra can attain can help attain everything including moksha and also all the worldly aspects also after a particular stage when you go to the highest level or the higher level or highest level whichever it is because we cannot understand which is higher which is highest etc ultimately it becomes it does not differ from the supreme lord himself so it says vaachyatil unruhaikki adi upeyantara pararai ittai sadhana mahakkondu sadhittal upayantara pararai ittai sahakariya kondu dhan 
செய்யுமவர்களைப் போல அன்னிக்கே உபாயோபே எங்கள் இரண்டும் ஈஸ்வரனே என்று பிரதிபத்தி பண்ணியிருக்கை என்றபடி வெரி 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 செட்டில் கான்செப்ட் விச் ஹேஸ் டு பி அண்டர்ஸ்டுட் இன் அ வெரி கரெக்ட் மேனர் பட் ஆஃப்டர் அ பர்டிகுலர் ஸ்டேஜ் இஸ் ரீச் பை தி ஸ்ரீ வைஷ்ணவ் ஆர் பை தி ஸ்பிரிச்சுவல் ஆஸ்பைரன்ட் வாண்ட்ஸ் அட்டைன் மோக் ஆர் தி மொவுக்ஷு ஆஸ் இஸ் கார்ட் Ultimately, what happens? They will go beyond the mantra. Though the mantra is a stepping stone, they will not rest with the mantra only. They will go beyond the mantra that is the Vachaka and ultimately rest in the Vachya only as both the Upaya as well as Upaya. So to explain it in, a, in an easier manner. So in the beginning, what do you do? You use the Ashtakshara Mahamantra maximum with the intention of attaining moksha or liberation that is attaining the Paramapada of the Supreme God. But as you continuously progress, that is how I am telling, not telling it 100 times, 200 times, probably for even for several janmas because Krishna says, Aneka janma samsiddha tato yadhukara. So, chanting that mantra in, in, the, in the highest state of consciousness, to put it in a modern terminology, you have to read that state of consciousness wherein you actually tell the mantra in the most effective manner, where it actually reaches the Supreme Lord Himself directly. Then, when you reach that stage, what happens? Ultimately, you have the Supreme Lord Himself as the means. rather than the mantra as the means. This is what our Purvacharyas have done. So, then what happens? The Supreme Lord is the means and the Supreme Lord Himself is the end also. So, that is why there is no Phalataratamya as it is mentioned in the Shastras. So, according to the Madhva philosophy, what happens? There is Taratamya or differentiation between the levels of happiness a liberated soul enjoys based on the efforts he has put in in this world. So suppose I chant the Ashtakshara Mahamantra uh, one billion times and I get liberated. So Keshava Swami chants it for two billion times and he also gets liberated. One more person chants it for three billion times and he gets liberated. But according to Sri Vaishnava philosophy, the bliss enjoyed in moksha liberation is equal. There, there is no differentiation. There is no, I am enjoying higher bliss, you are enjoying lower bliss, or you are enjoying higher bliss, I am enjoying lower bliss. is not there. Then the question comes, does the Tatkratun Nyaya, which was just explained now, does it not hold good? Yes, it holds good. But as you reach a particular level, what happens is, the Supreme Lord Himself will become the means. Therefore, there is no Taratamya differentiation in the means because the Supreme Lord Narayana Himself is the means. And which is the end? He is the end also. So he is the means, he is the end. Upaya Bhagavane Upaya Bhagavane Upaya. Using him as the means, we attain him only. So as the Mumukshu or the person who is attaining, interested in attaining liberation progresses, what happens? the Supreme Lord Himself will become the Upaya rather than the mantra that denotes the Supreme Lord. So this is the concept Swami so Manavad Mahamani is trying to explain here, which is a very, very subtle concept which should be understood in the proper spirit without confusing, without any confusion. I hope I have been able to explain it to you in a manner that is easily understand, understandable. So that's what he says.
செய்யுமவர்களைப் போல நிக்கே உபாயோபே எங்கள் இரண்டும் ஈஸ்வரனே both the means as well as the end both are the supreme lord only endre pratipatti panni irukkai endra padi but this is not it's the beginning itself it is after the person reaches a particular stage one very important aspect has been noted in this context many a times people are told in the lectures or discourses that once we attain the supreme name of the supreme lord narayana immediately moksha is assured yes it is true in what sense that means he is on the right path but even afterwards there is a long way to progress so to mention about the greatness of this uh, name of the lord the supreme uh, lord narayana it is mentioned once he mentions it he is assured of moksha but afterwards it is like if you have a bank account you can get money from abroad i am just giving a very very mundane example because without a bank account how can you get money from abroad suppose you have to send some money for some i think for uh, building a temple or something like that you have to have a bank account so i have a bank account i can receive money but unless the money is uh, is received i cannot do what i need to do so bank account is a prerequisite for that but unless a person a philanthropist sends some money as donation i cannot build a temple or print some book or whatever it is but when somebody says see if you have a bank account then you can get donations and do some good work so it is like that so if you know the narayana nama if you chant the narayana nama and also ashtaki maha mantra you can accomplish everything how many times with what type of mentality what type of mental disposition what type of atmosphere what type of a mindset you should have all these things are mentioned there but when one has to know the greatness of the narayana nama or the ashtakshara maha mantra in that context it is said immediately you will attain moksha but it's not as easy as it is said so it is easier said than done <laughs> that is how i would like to put it so this is what he says it's a very very subtle point that ultimately what happens the person who is a devotee as he starts starts to go higher and higher and higher in the spiritual path ultimately he may he will go beyond the mantra and have the supreme lord narayana himself as the means also and of course lord narayana is the end we have to attain him attaining him only is our principal aim of life so that will happen and why there is no tarathamya difference in the bliss all the divatmas enjoy once they attain tarathamya means of course tatkratunya applies but since the supreme lord himself becomes the upaya there is no difference in the upaya therefore there is no difference in the upaya therefore there is no difference in the phala also that is the fruits are results <clears throat> this is the purport of this sutra then we come to the 26 sutra iridannil chollu hiravartham swarupamam swarupanurupam arapraapyamam swarupamum upayamam phala umyanna uma so five important aspects are mentioned here swarupa swarupanurupamana praapyam swarupam upayam phalam we are quite familiar with these words so i will not once again go to the explanation of the words i will go to the uh, <coughs> commentary and then explain it inimel in mantratrik vakyartham irand padiya harulichai hira idirannil enne todangi so hereafter 
the meaning of the sentence literal meaning and also the meanings that are attained by going further to the literal meaning are explained by pudlaloka acharya that is what swami manavada mamuni says he says adavade immantan tannil chonnu hiravattham ivaatma vinudiye sheshatva paratam tringala hiraswarupam so the main aspects that are focused upon by this mantra are as follows according to the first interpretation. So the first one is Ivatma Vinudesh Shatva Paratam Tringala Hira Swarupam. So the Swarupa are the main feature of the individual soul. What is it? How is the individual soul defined? What are his unique and exclusive characteristics? This is mentioned as Sheshatva Paratam Dringal. One is he is totally subservient to the Supreme Lord, which is Sheshatva. And he is totally Paratantra is totally dependent on the Supreme God. So, total dependence and total subservience. These are the two most, most, most important features that de define a Jivatma. One thing we can realize in a very gross manner, even ordinary people like me can understand, we can realize that even the breathing is not in our hands. It is, we are totally dependent on the wishes of the Supreme Lord. Because what has to happen when we have no control over anything in life? Of course, we go to our places of work, we do something, we write something, we read something, we tell something, we eat something, all those things. We feel they are under our control. But that does not this should not be used, misused or abused, this theory. Because some people who may engage in some illicit practices, they may tell it is all the wish of God that I am happening, it is happening like this. It's not under my control. Out of a sense of escapism, that is not correct. But when you think deeply, you know, you know, you don't know how and when, for what purpose you are born. When a person is going today, who knows? Nobody knows. <laughs> Even the person himself doesn't know, his relatives doesn't know, nobody else knows. And what has to happen to a person in his life? When? What is going to happen, nobody knows. Why it is going to happen, nobody knows. Nothing will be known. Even this, the inhalation and exhalation, which is the key to sustain the sustenance of life in this body. It is not in our hands because we inhale and exhale even when we are unconscious. We inhale and exhale involuntarily when we are asleep. So do we do it consciously? No. Then who is making it happen? It is the Supreme Lord Himself. So that is why it is said in the Shastras that even the inhalation and exhalation which is the cause of sustenance of life in this body is purely due to the will of the Supreme Lord. You may call him Supreme Lord or you may call him some unknown force that is dictating everything in this life. However you call it, it doesn't matter, it is the same thing. So it is, we are totally Paratantra. Yes. Good word, autonomy. So we are totally not in control of ourselves. Then in whose control are we? Are we in the control of some other human being? No. Are we in control of, of course, some things might be controlled by some of our relatives or something like that, but that's not the issue. Here. Who else can control the inhalation and exhalation and make it happen? So that is why Paratantriya 
or total dependence on the Supreme Lord is one of the unique features, exclusive features of this Jeeva. Then Sheshatva. Sheshatva is one aspect. Paratantriya, that is why I said Paratantriya, we can realize to a particular extent in a very grass manner even now. But Sheshatva is very difficult to realize. We don't realize as of now. Of course, we may have some inkling, but that I feel, as far as I am concerned, that that realization has dawned on me that I am totally subservient to the Lord. But in reality, that is so. We are totally subservient to the Lord. We are totally dependent, we are totally subservient. So these two have to be realized by a Sri Vaishnava first. Unless he realizes both these things, he will not be a person who has attained the knowledge of his own self. And thus then, Ivatma Vinudeshe Shatva Bharatam Tringala Hiraswarupam. How beautifully he has explained. You see. How objectively he has explained. Andasvarupatka Nurupa Mairan Dulla Kainkariya Mahira Prabhya. Then what is the prapya? What is the thing we have to attain? And the Swarupatak Anurupa Mahira Dulla Kainkariya Mahira Prabhya. So very ordinary example. Opposite example is can I win win Wimbledon now? Wimbledon can we Tennis championship now? No. Because it is not according to my Swarupa. You have to have a very lean body. You should be expert in playing tennis. Probably you should start. A Wimbledon champion average age is about 20 or 21. So you, a Wimbledon champion typically starts when he is 7 or 8. He has to have a very lean body. He has to feel, have, be fit. So he should be good in <laughs> serving and volleying or something like that. That's the hell in tennis uh, language, not a base trainer. Because on grass courts you have to be a servant body player, that's what they say. So the prapya is always according to this varupa. Suppose I dream of becoming the American president. <laughs> of course, if God will will is there, it is it may happen. But that is not at all likely, it is totally, totally unlikely or impossible. Impossible because I am not an American citizen first. So that is why Andaswarupatak Anurupamairindulakainkariamahira Prapyam. So the Prapya has always to be in, the, in accordance with this Varupa. So if, if I want to become attain scholarship in a particular field of Sanskrit, yes, that is possible because I have learned the basics of Sanskrit to a particular extent. So that prapya or that attainment is according to my swarupa. Suppose I want to, of course, no, I am not well versed in the Divya Prabhandas. My knowledge of Divya Prabhandas is almost next to zero. But suppose I want to learn the Divya Prabhandas in a good manner. I may be able to do it because I have learned the basics well to some extent, and then I can indulge in that and I can learn it. That is not a big issue. So the prapya is according to my swarupa. Or if I want to write something in English, if I improve my language skills, if I improve my comprehension skills, I may be able to do it because I know the basics of English. Therefore, since the swarupa of a jivatma or individual soul is Sheshatva and Paratantriya, that is subservience and total dependence on the Supreme Lord. What is the prapya? What should he aspire for? He should aspire for Kainkariya. Because that is his nature. He is born to serve the Lord and nothing more than that. But when you say nothing more than that, is the serv serv servitude to the Lord and Indian itself? Yes, it is an Indian itself. Because that is where 
divine bliss exists when a person engages in the servitude of the supreme lord nothing more is enjoyable so here as i mentioned the advaitins actually raise an objection how is it that serving another person can result in happiness because in sanskrit also it is said seva shvavritti rakhyata servitude is always like the life of a dog you always have to be at the beck and call of the master so how do you say that servitude they they even say of course when you are working under a boss you feel oh it is my <laughs> karma that i am working for under a boss he is troubling me no end when will i get liberated from this <laughs> from this bloody fellow any other time people will feel like that because say vash pravrti rakhya engaging engaging in the servitude of another person is like the <clears throat> like being a dog who is at the beck and call of his master no is the answer given by the vishishta advaita philas only if the servitude or seva is karma paravasha is being done due to the bondage then only it is most despised or despised on the other hand if it is voluntary on the other hand if it is out of love or affection then definitely it is most enjoyable and the very beautiful analogy is given so when a mother gives birth to a child she will perform all certain types of services to the young young child she will clean all the uncleanly issues all the excreta and urine etc of the child but does she feel unhappy does she feel uncomfortable doing that no she does it with that most love and affection because she feels it is my child so when it is preeti karita of course here also it is karma paravasha only it is due to the past karmas only she is the mother and a an individual soul has taken the form of a son or daughter but when it even if it is karma paravasha when it is done with preeti or involuntarily done with affection it becomes most enjoyable even in india you see when the son is even 25 to 30 years old the mother will apply oil to the head of the son which is a very important shastra or an event in all the auspicious uh, samskaras or sacramental uh, events that are conducted so the mother will be about 60 or 70 years old she will with great affection she will apply oil to the head of the son or even daughter so when a kind karya or service is done out of love and affection involuntarily or voluntarily it is most enjoyable so when the son partakes of the food that is prepared by the mother with with appreciation she the mother feels or oh, she has attained fulfillment because my son has enjoyed the food that i have prepared when this is suppose a mother says a son says i don't a young child which is 3 or 6 months old assuming that it can talk suppose it says i will not get served by you you just leave me will the mother feel unhappy or happy she will feel most unhappy so when this is the case when the supreme lord who is the repository of all the auspicious qualities that exist that can exist serving him will be of utmost 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 bliss it is it, it can be it, it would be the only blissful thing in, in the world when the supreme lord accepts our service so that is why ultimately there is nothing other more blissful 
they are engaging in the kainkarya of the supreme lord and that is very much in line with the nature of the jiva it's not something very far fetched so anda swarupatak anurupamairam dulla kainkaryamairam prapyam how beautifully pranavala mauni explains it annike so this is one way of explaining it another way of <coughs> explaining it is ಶೇಷತ್ವಾಪಮೋಪಮಾನೇಶ್ವರೋಪಮಾನೇಶ್ವರೋಪಮಾನೇಶ್ವರೋಪಮಾನೇಶ್ವರೋಪಮಾನ
a person attains by chanting the Mahashtakshara Mahamantra is explained in detail in two other works that I have authored. One is <coughs> Prameya Shekharam and another is Archiradi Gati. These are the two other among the Ashtadasha Rahasyas. The work called Prameya Shekhara is one very important work. And Archiradi Gati is another very important. So that the nature of the result, namely Moksha, is explained in detail in these two works. So he says, I will not repeat it. So please study those two works with regard to the nature of the fruit. However, Swami Manavana Mahavani explains it in detail because we are very poor. So as soon as we read this sutra, do we refer to that work? Oh, oh, he has mentioned in the Prameya Shekhara, very good, fine. We just take it easy and we move on in life. <coughs> oh, it has been mentioned in Archiradikati. Okay, let us see. If it is mentioned, fine. <laughs> we take it so casual. So, Manwal Mamani knows that people like us who study the Mumukshupadi are very casual in our approach. So, he very beautifully explains what has been mentioned in the Prameya Shekhara and Archiradikati. अशेष शेष प्रवृत्तियाँ हैं आले अधिक कुंपड़िये ही संग्रहेना तुम्हें ऐसे करवा हिरप प्रबंध तिलम विस्तरेना अचिरादि गतियाँ हिरप प्रबंध तिलम विशदमा हर चुन्नों अवत तिले कंडे कुल्ला दिन गई तो मनवाड़ बामनी समराइज़स व्हाट हैज़ बीन मेंशन हिंदी प्रमेष ऐकरा इन अ कंसाइज़ मैनर एंड इन the work called Archira Adhikati is a very detailed manner. What is that? It has to be explained in detail. So that we will do in the next session. With these words, I conclude to the today's session. Any feedback, discussions, questions are welcome. So thank you very much, Swami. Um, so you were uh, you were speaking about um, about the vacha and vachika. Nice. Uh, yes. Yeah. So is it is it is it sometimes there is a word uh, which denotes something which is not real? Somebody yes. somebody may make a word. This one example is given. In the Shastras, for example, the horns of a rabbit, the rabbit horn, that is the example given, or also the sky lotus. The sky flower, yes. There are, yes. there are some examples given like that. So the, the, the lotus is always found in the pond, it cannot be found in the sky. It cannot be, a lotus cannot be far, uh, found in the sky because it is not born, it is born only in the pond. There also, or if you say the horns of a rabbit, because or the rabbit horn, you can say the horns of a cow or a buffalo. Horns do not exist for rabbit. There also, they have very beautifully and very clearly delineated. These two words also mean something that exists only. So when you say rabbit horn or shashashringa in Sanskrit, it means shashashringam nasti. You cannot even negate a shashringa because it does not, you cannot negate an object that is totally non-existent. You can never even imagine an object that is totally non-existent. So even if for the sake of imagination, you say the horns of a rabbit. Here also, you know horn separately, you know rabbit separately. Only the relationship between rabbit and horn is non-existent. Therefore, you can never ever mention a word which does not have a meaning or there cannot be any entity does not have a word to denote it. 
this relationship is a very very complicated and subtle relationship though it is very simple to understand in ordinary terms so um just for instance we have in english the word void and we have the word illusion void so sometimes people say that space is a void void means it is there is nothing there but yes. even oh, even absence, then, absence, absence, absence of everything positive is a void so you yes. also what happens you are familiar with absence the concept of absence suppose now is there a, an elephant in front of me no so the elephant is absent i would say so absence you are familiar absence of an entity like an elephant you are familiar so there also you are when you say void absence of any entity there also you are familiar with the words absence of entity only those the relationship does not exist some illusion some... is very illusion is a very famous uh, very complicated but very relatively simple uh, topic you can never have a person who has not seen a snake in his life can never have an illusion of a snake so it is the impression of something he has already seen only so illusion also is <coughs> in that way even illusion is real according to ramanuja acharya because he says the knowledge cannot be verifiable it is not verified because it's not according to the fact or the uh, status of what exists in front of you but there cannot be an illusion of an entity that you have never seen in this world so that is why he says yathartham sarva vigyan that the, some people interpret that ramanuja acharya has never accepted the concept of illusion at all that is totally wrong he says even illusion even in illusion you can have the premonition or the imagination of an object that is real you cannot have an illusion of an unreal object or even for that point an object that you have never seen in this world so so this will completely this idea will completely negate advaita if because advaita says jagat mithya so if the if the the world cannot be completely false because nothing can be completely false yes yeah in that sense you are right yes and and the, and also the advaitins are saying though that uh, brahman is nirguna but but nirguna is... ni, nirguna nirguna of course yeah. yes so so nirguna itself is a guna there can there can never be anything that is devoid of attributes in this world that is what ramanuja acharya very beautifully establishes in the mahasiddha even if you say that he is totally entity is totally devoid of qualities it means you are telling it is devoid of the qualities that you are having in mind so you say he is a useless fellow useless means what does he know? is he not living is he not eating and all those things why do you say he is useless it means the use that you are having in mind does not exist in him so they say you are calling him useless so he says when you say nirvishesha also he says vivakshita katipaya vishesha rahita it does not have the attributes that you are having in mind which is being mentioned as nirvishesha so the advaitins are so the advaitins are saying that brahman has the quality of having no qualities so that means it is no no they don't say like that when you what we tell is what we and also the advaitarya school of philosophy tells is even when you say it does not have a quality that is also a quality in an indirect way that is also an attribute you don't call it as a quality but you call it as an attribute or dharma even nirgunatva as we call it in shastrik parlance is also a dharma or an attribute of the entity so how can you say there is no relationship of dharma dharmi bhava or the substrate and substrate between two objects but the advaita view point it holds good in a, in a totally alien uh, scenario which is not useful to us as of now. so there this... there might be a state there might be a occur a state when these differences fail to come to our notice at that time everything is on yes we also accept it but we don't talk about that stage because you cannot denote or you cannot 
have any use any words to denote that stage so why talk about it but that is at the at the we we don't discuss it at this stage because it, it doesn't make any sense so so do we accept this idea of anivachaniya anirvachaniya we don't accept that is why anirvachaniya see i will tell i will give an example so suppose you you render me a very very great help which i can never forget then what will i say keshav swami i have no words to explain my gratitude i will say anirvachaniya means what that which cannot be explained by the medium of words and that is what anirvachaniya means that means the help is rendered by you is so 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 important it is so vital crucial or whatever it is so that is the highest state that is when you say i have no words to explain my gratitude that doesn't mean that it cannot be explained at all that is why when they say brahma avedya avachya it cannot it is not knowable it is not sayable it is not denotable we say yes it is not knowable yes in what sense it is not knowable in its entirety because it does not have a, it is an endless endless entity nobody can know it fully in that sense it is, it is not knowable this way it is very very beautifully mentioned vachyatvam vedyata cha swayam abhidavati brahmano brahmanah अनुष्ठवाहिपरीक्षितो one cannot know the supreme brahman in its entirety even the vedas cannot know because there is no end to the supreme brahman it is an endless entity but that doesn't mean it is totally unknowable some portion of it is known to us it can is knowable so you are also talking about taratamya taratamya we will if you have uh, Uh, detail. If we need to have a detailed discussion, we will do it next week. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. I know. I, I know. It's a very big topic to you. <laughs> no, but also the thing because uh, some people feel there is a type of taratamya in Vaikuntha, and other people uh, also. We were just studying uh, Gita Arjuna Sangraha with the commentary of Vedanta Deshika, and he uses the word taratamya, and he said uh, he says that there is a some some people they may want to get back to use bhakti yoga and they come to a, a stage of wanting to become uh, like brahma or indra and then uh, beyond that somebody wants kaivalya and another person wants actual moksha in paramapada or or uh, you know uh, kind karya to the lord directly in paramapada and he says this is a taratamya Oh, this is this we have discussed earlier. I we will discuss it next week, surely. Okay, great. So uh, those were the those are the main things that also I was thinking about again about uh, the bliss, the taratamya, the bliss of the kaivalya and the bliss of the other types of moksha. So that's when you said taratamya. Let's discuss. It's a very very hot, uh, very controversial topic even among the sampradayas. We will surely discuss about. It. Yeah. So the very the very last thing that I wanted to just uh, mention was. this uh, this idea of uh, of of the swarupa that everybody has to do according to their swarupa but if the swarupa of the jiva is the same every jiva's swarupa is the same so then yes. why every jiva's journey and every jiva's um every jiva's path to parama pada to moksha is not the same if the swarupa is the same it's also it's also we'll discuss separately because it has to be discussed at some length mm. so we will do it separately the next class so i'll conclude with the mangala shloka thank you mujhe dramam jete sat kurat tulakshari kamastham prapadyante jantavo antamadrishah 
पुण्या बोध विकाय पापध्वाय श्रीमाभूतभूमो राज दिवाक विनीकृत विरिंचारि निरंकुश विभूत अमाजपदाभोज सामश्रेण शादी